So this presentation is going to talk about asynchronous counters, tell you about states and moduluses, let you look at some counters, um, talk about the ripple effect, and summarize how we designed one. So in an asynchronous counter, only the first flip-flop is clocked by an external clock. Everything else is clocked by an output of the flip-flop. So you only use the clock one time. Synchronous counters are slower than asynchronous counters are slower than synchronous because of a transmission delay. And we also call them ripple counters because of the way they pulse. So um, the number of states in a flip-flop determines the count limit. So if we want to count to um, one, we only need one flip-flop, two to the one, then we can have the range zero and one. Um, if we want to count to three, we have to use two flip-flops, two to the two, we have four states then, and we can count from zero to three, all right? Uh, you see an example I've listed on the slide here that a modulus 12 counter would count from 0 to 11, but it needs 12 states, okay, so 2 to the 3, 3 flip-flops would be 8, that's not enough, so we have to use 2 to the 4, 4 flip-flops, 16, we have to have more than enough. So this is a 1-bit counter, a D flip-flop. And basically, all I have is a clock and one D flip-flop, and I take the output, not Q, feed it back into the input D. I tie the preset and the clear, which are both active low because they have the bubble, to high, basically making them inactive. I'm never going to use them. So this one, this light will be off. At first, that will be zero, then the clock will come by, it'll be one. Zero, one, zero, one, like that, on and on. So this would be a two-bit counter. It would count zero, one, two, three, okay? So we start with the clock, all right? Again, not Q is tied back into D. Preset and clear are both tied to five volts to keep them inactive. So this is actually the least significant bit. It's smaller than the way we normally, opposite of the way we normally think of it, okay? And then we take not Q and feed it into the clock. Again, we've turned preset and clear off here. We take not Q and feed it in. This Q is the next output. This one is the most significant bit. So when we have the number zero, these will both be off. Then one, this one will be on, Q0. Two, Q0 will be off, this will be on. Then three, they will both be on. So you can see here, this is the clock at zero, one, two, three, all right? This would be a three bit counter. That would be two to the three. It would count from zero to seven. It's the same thing, all right? Please look, the clocks all come from the not Q of the previous clock. Okay, there's a ripple effect in these things. So if we actually zoom way in on this, from here to here, what we'd actually see is because each one of the electrons have to travel and that sort of thing, you can see that while it looks like on this first one on the scale, that's one millisecond, that it happens at the same time. There's actually a tiny little window right here where one block is a nanosecond where there's a propagation delay from here to here to here to here. Okay, so it just briefly gives you an incorrect answer on some scales. Obviously, neither of these is visible at the level our eye can detect. So this would be a down counter, okay? So before we tied with a D flip-flop, a down counter is going to start at 7 and then count down to 0 if it's a 3-bit. So before we took not Q here and tied it to the clock, not Q to the clock. Now when we want to count down, we tie Q to the clock. When we want to count down, we tie the Qs to the clock, not the not Qs. Okay, so that's the only change here. So up counters, you connect the clock 
to the input Q input with the opposite polarity. So this is a positive edge triggered clock and you tie it to not Q. This is a negative edge triggered clock and you tie it to Q. Down counters, they have the same polarity. Q to positive edge, not Q to negative edge.